This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. Your shirts get better and better every week, and mine always stays the same. You just make me look bad every week. I appreciate it. We got to get you some color, man. We got to get you some color. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> well, hey, one of the things I want to do is once again put your feet to the fire and talk about the future, make some crazy predictions. Again, these are just wild ass guesses from two crazy guys who don't mind putting guesses out there. So uh, we have a huge number coming out tomorrow. Market moving. And that will be CPI. Uh, as no you know, uh, CPI actually has two numbers in it. It'll be headline and core. I actually, uh, actually, before I, I'm going to ask you what you think's coming, and then I'll tell you what I think's coming. So CPI tomorrow, what do you think happens? Yeah, it's funny. Every one of these is the most important one. Right? Yeah, exactly. So- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it really does feel like that. And that, that's the way the market seems to be, you know, a, a coiled spring ready to react one way or the other. It really does feel that way. So just by way of context, we came from a peak of 9.1% inflation. That was two months ago. And then it ticked down to 8.5. Mm-hmm. And now it looks like expectations tomorrow by the market is looking at an 8% headline inflation number. 8.81, eight, I've seen both, but yes. Okay. Yep. So eight to eight one. So um, I have persistently been admittedly early on inflation going away. And a lot of that goes back to um, my broad thoughts on technology being a massive deflationary pressure and Mm -hmm. that being persistent. But also I've been wrong and thinking it's too early because oil did not abate as quickly as I thought it was, which Mm -hmm. now oil has rolled over Mm -hmm. for now two straight months. Um, I actually a little bit more than that since June. I think eight, 81 days in a row, eight, 81 days in a row, gas yeah. prices yeah, are down, gas, which is yeah. just, just crazy, crazy, crazy talk. Right. Crazy. Um, but yeah, so that's why you're not seeing as many posts on, on the high gas yeah. prices anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly yeah. But yeah, no, so that's been meaningful. So that's a big component of the headline number. The other big components of the headline numbers are housing as well as food prices. Those are kind of the big three, if you will. Yeah. Go ahead and interject it, if you it, want. It's food and gas in headline. Rent is in core, but all three of those. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I'm speaking headline yeah. number here. I think the big drivers. All inclusive. Are, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. The big drivers are going to be, you know, housing. They call it shelter. Um, uh, now I've lost my train of thought. So housing as food well as and uh, food and as well as energy, right, yeah. or oil right. prices. Mm-hmm. So I think what you see is a massive, massive downtick in oil prices, which is a big, big win from a headline perspective. Correct. And so I do think we actually get a downward print from 8%. Something in the sevens is what I anticipate from a headline number. So so again, let's say that because of what I said on the daily financial news, expectations is 8-1. You're calling something in the sevens. Yeah, I, I think it's high sevens. I mean, that is, to be clear, that is a big, big move downwards. Oh, in yeah, in a month? Just, yeah, in a half a point. And, and you also have to realize that we went up at a, uh, you know, a, a, a parabolic type shift upwards earlier this year. Some of that had to do with the fact that the numbers that we were looking at relative last year. Yeah, the base effect. Were, yeah. Mm-hmm. The base effect, right, from a year ago. We're already so, – so now we've already gotten that shift upwards. A year ago, inflation had already taken hold. And mm-hmm. therefore, when you're looking at a year prior, you're not looking at depressed numbers like you were earlier this year because pandemic was still really in effect at that point. So I right. think that has a really meaningful effect as we go forward on what inflationary numbers look like. So you know what? We agree this time. We haven't agreed <laughs> well, the like, last so three months. But, but full disclosure, like, let me give the audience and they know all too well. Michael's been right. I have been wrong. He has been well on the over, 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 over train. And he's been right. And I will ask you this to put your feet to the fire a little bit. Mm-hmm. What's going on in wages? Because I know that's been your biggest driver of the over. Well, this this is this is the most important wrinkle. And I, th- I, I think Wall Street's going to miss it. And again, when I say Wall Street, retail is going to miss it. Yep. Yep, I, yep. So again, I uh, on my daily financial news Sunday morning, I made my call. I said expectations were 8-1. I think we come in at 8, and we actually could see 7-9. So I'm calling for the first time under. But here's the bugaboo. We are about to learn for the first time since the early 80s why the Fed has headline in core. Headline, as we will quickly learn, can be monkeyed with. When you start releasing a million barrels a day from our strategic reserve, gasoline falls. <laughs> you sure that's how it works, supply I, and demand? I, I, I'm guessing that's what my degree says. Yes. So again, you release an extra million barrels a day. 
prices go down. Headline goes yep. down. Yep. What I think Wall Street's going to miss tomorrow is core is going to stay flat or go up. Last month, core was 5.9. Expectations for core are six. I am calling for core to be 6.2. So let's talk about what this means to me. I believe the worst case scenario tomorrow is headline comes in lower than expected, 7.9 or 8, but clearly peak inflation, peak inflation, deflation is coming. And core goes up because rent is starting to ripple through and wages. We have had our first two months in a row. This will likely be our third of wage, real wage growth. And I think it gets worse from here. So again, the Wall Street's going to rip if what happens happens. What If what I think happens so happens. Your take is they're going to react on headline. Exactly. Because retail and that is, is gonna, what retail. That's certainly what retail is affected by. No doubt. The You'll morning will down. rip. Yeah. The morning will rip. The adults will come in later. That, I, I was to say, that's a good point. The institutions start to step in. You see immediate reaction. Then all of a sudden they get the reins pulled back in on them. And the Fed's going to bang us with 75 on the 21st. Because again, the only way, the only way conceivable to get a 50, because right now it's a 50 or 75. I don't think anybody's calling for anything. There's a 90% else. chance that I looked this morning that it was going to be yeah, 75. I did too. Yeah. The only way you get 50 is if you get headline like 7-7 seven, seven, and core goes to 5-5. Five, five. Could it happen? Yep. Sure. I have no idea. Am I, it's not what I'm calling for, but that's, I just, we're getting banged with 75. And again, I think, I think core going up is the problem. The Fed will just keep pointing at that going problem, 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 problem. But stock market rips. Like we keep saying the same thing over and over and over. Don't fight the Fed. And when yeah. the Fed tells you, I look at core, I look at core, I look at core, I look yeah. at core, 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 core. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they're making no bones about what they're doing. I, I do have an interesting question for you, though. Please. Going back to kind of the, the oil prices and the conversation about strategic reserves, et cetera. Last week on Monday, I believe it was, OPEC decides to cut oil. Prices, 100,000. Yeah. Right. So. So oil. So so. By the way, oil market in general is just a big cartel that's it controlled is. by OPEC. So everyone understands that OPEC, OPEC, OPEC controls, plus, blah blah blah. Yeah, 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 OPEC plus, right? Controls the supply and demand of oil around the world. And mm -hmm. if prices get too high, they increase supply to try to bring down prices. And if prices fall off, which is what we're seeing right now, they decrease the production to boost the price. Shocking. <laughs> But no, yeah, but here we go. This is where it gets a little bit weird and a little bit tricky. Last week, they cut production. On so Monday. lower yep. supply on a supply demand effect drives prices up. Oil prices roll over last week. Yeah. So uh, as I remembered, oil went up Monday, the day it was announced, and then rolled yep. over and, starting Wednesday. In a closed Wednesday. market in the United States. Yeah, in the closed market. Well, oil, oil doesn't really close, but yes, in, right. in, a, in a relatively closed market, right? Yeah. Then the, and it rolled over Wednesday and actually ended the week lower. Correct. So in my mind, that screams again. What? So I believe 2023, I don't think you and I talked because you took last week off to be with your in-laws for Labor Day. So that's OK. But I think 2023 could. I love yeah, it. It's like, yeah, you, know, you got to take a day off every once in a while. I get it. Gosh, we only asked for one hour a week. But it's OK. Uh, I, I, I kid. The market was closed, so you could take a day off. Um, I actually think 2023, Taylor, could be the worst economic year of my adult life. So what does this mean? Why, is, why does oil go down? Because I think we see the third worldwide recession uh, in the last, I don't know, 70 years. I don't, yep. Asia trouble, Europe trouble. I think America pu gets pulled into a recession because of housing depression. That's why gas is down. It's just- Yeah, so, so I don't disagree with you whatsoever on what the result or, or what the cause of gas being down is. Gas being down is a direct, direct, direct reflection as to what's going on in the economy globally, because that is a global, global market. Not everything is, but gas and, I'm sorry, oil is absolutely oil, a global right. market. Yeah. And I do agree with you. Uh, and we've belabored this point maybe a little bit, or at least I have. What's going on in Europe right now is is really a scary thing. And and we are to, t to come talking a little bit about yeah, video what's going on in yeah. Russia. Yep. Next episode. But not, nonetheless, um, what's going on with Russia squeezing, squeezing, squeezing the dependence of, uh, on, um, of Europe on their oil production is going to have a massive effect. And the stuff that's coming out of the narratives that are coming out of how they're going to deal with this as the cold winter months come around really is a scary proposition for Europe. And their inflation is just I mean, we think we have a bad here. Their inflation is rampant. It really is. Well, again, the, you know, we should all hope for peace and prosperity today, tomorrow. No Let's doubt. Let's just hope it ends. 
and then oil gets or the you know natural gas it all gets turned back on but if it doesn't if we go through the winter with this um we will see small businesses close shop we will see it, it it's it's frightening to think about the ripple effects because at some point I mean, they're going to try price controls. And as you know, anything about the 70s in the United States, we tried price controls. They don't work. They feel good for like three seconds and then they don't. And then your currency gets hit because you're issuing all this debt and it's just bad. It, it, you know, I am very, I mean, Europe certainly in a recession, but if this, if this goes on for through the winter and they have a harsh winter, let's also pray for a warm winter or a mild winter or whatever the right vernacular for sure. is. For sure. It could be, it could be pretty bad. Yeah. And it, it's interesting. So like, that's the economic standpoint from a market standpoint, we also have to realize what's going on in the United States right now and, and globally for that matter, but let's focus on the United States. So globally right now, there's 39 major central banks, 25, including the fed hours of those 39 central banks are raising rates. So the fed is telling us we're going to continue to take rates higher. But I think the thing that's going underappreciated is the fact that we are just getting on the onset right now of this quantitative tightening process. Yeah, 95 billion September, yeah. Yes, so some numbers on that. Right now, the Fed's balance sheet contains about one third of our entire treasury and mortgage-backed securities market. Whoa! So the Fed has about one third of the mortgage-backed securities and the treasury market. And for context, that's $9 trillion of balance sheet, 9 trillion with a T. Our global, or I'm sorry, our annual GDP is around 21 to 23, depending on the year, trillion dollars. So that's about 40% of our global GDP. I'm, I'm sorry, I keep saying global. Our annual GDP of the United States sits on the Fed's balance sheet. And they are telling us actively, we are going to let that roll into the market. We are going to let that bleed through. And so that has a lot of foregone or, or a lot of knock on kind of things that end up taking place and dominoes that continue to fall because of that. On the other side of it, quantitative easing, when the Fed was in the market buying these assets, you saw nothing but asset prices from stocks, bonds, commodities, et ripping, ripping. So now when that omnipotent buyer that sits in there and says, I'll buy anything, takes their hands away and there's no floor there to exist, that backstop's not there. And they're raising rates at the same time. And when the Fed's not buying mortgages, what do you think happens to mortgage rates? Yeah, I came out the other day and said that uh, I could see mortgage rates at 7%, which again, in a housing market, we're going to go into a depression. I, I, it just, it's going to happen because transactions- well, I mean, the 30 years got to be darn close to six, right? Right now? Yeah, actually, it, it ticked to six and a quarter, I think, on Thursday last week. I was going to say, I thought the, it was- the, a, Yeah. Yeah, the cycle peak was 6.28 in June. We got up to 6.25. It's coming. I'm, I started calling for 7% in Taylor. I did some math just using the ratios we have today. We could see an eight. Eight. Yeah, that's not good. Not that's not good. That's Jeez, not good. That, and that really is a scary thing. And and to the point that we've had conversations on before, housing accounts for about 15% of the overall gross domestic product here in the United States. It's not just the housing that changes, but it's the builder, then it's Home Depot, then it's all the bleed through knock on Raymore and Flanagan, all the furniture, everything that bleeds into that, the labor that builds that. I mean, it's all of those things that get affected by mortgage rates. Yeah, it's it's it's... This is, again, why I think 2023 uh, could be the worst economic year of my life. I think 2024 is much better. I just, I just think we need time, right? The, everybody wants the crash tomorrow. They want it tomorrow, right? This is right. not an NFT. It doesn't happen that right. way. The economy, uh, you know, frankly, we are not even really seeing the impacts yet of the Fed rate increases, right? Those are six to 18 month lags. So correct. I, uh, you know, again, macro wise, I'm very concerned for 2023 micro. I'm excited. I'm ecstatic. It'll probably be the second best year of my investing career because I, I will look for motivated sellers and I'm willing the to wait to find to them. There. Yeah. Blood in the street. Like Warren Buffett says, you know, who's swimming naked. I'm going to go, I'm going to have some bathing suits for people and go, Hey, I'll take that. I'll take that. So let me ask you something on that real quick. Um, on the, on the selling side of existing sure. livers, um, Existing, existing livers, livers. existing homeowners, <laughs> right? So, do you expect a massive tick up in that, or a no. need to get no. people forced out? Okay, nope. I, see I, I, I didn't think that was your take, but I just didn't want to confuse that last comment. No, I see record supply destruction. So for forty yeah. years, the housing market was generally: I move in, I live there five years, I move up because 
The bigger house costs more, but rates, generally speaking, were down. It made the move up easier. With the cycle that we're on now, the move up buyer's dead. First time inventory doesn't exist. Home builders aren't building. We are going to have a record crash in housing transactions. Millions and millions of transactions crashed, hence a housing depression. However, life doesn't stop. Death, divorce, job transfers, non-perfect properties that aren't perfect for FHA. There will be lots of people that need to sell that won't yep. fit in a market where somebody has to pay 8%, but because I'm a well-heeled investor, I can buy for cash. I can use private money. I got lots yep. of ways to do deals. Yep. So I will be looking for those opportunities. Specifically to wrap this up, I plan to deploy less cash and buy more assets via creative financing. That's what I'll be doing in the next 18 months. Love it. Love it. Got to strike when the iron's hot. The opportunity is there. And, and to your point, when you don't have a competition because it's 8% mortgage rates, there are many hands out there looking to say, hey, I'll give you cash for it right now. Yeah. Or you know what? Even better. Here's my cash number. Make it up 200. Or we could do terms and I'll give you 250. <laughs> what do there you, you want? go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, Taylor, where can people find you? Yeah. Find us at Life Goal Investments on Instagram is the best spot. Appreciate it, Michael, as always. And folks, if you're not watching uh, Life Goal Investments on IG, you're missing out. He just put out a video or a post on tax loss harvesting. You have to go check it out. It could save you a lot of money. Thanks for all you do, bud. Appreciate you.